So do you want to test an argument for validity on a truth table? It's a perfect day for it. Okay. Let's do it. All right. So we can start with an English argument. One premise will be uh, if Anne swims, then Bob swims. And I'm letting capital A stand for Anne and B for Bob because we don't have much space. Uh, second premise is going to be uh, Anne won't swim. And the conclusion will be Bob won't swim. So I have an English argument. Uh, I should have, I'll put the little uh, pyramid there. Therefore, Bob won't swim. How's that? Good. Now we put this argument into our formal language. So the first premise is... A horseshoe B. Where A stands for... And swims. And B stands for... Bob swims. Yeah. All right. So actually A is standing for the antecedent and swims. B is standing for the whole consequent Bob swims. And then the second premise of this argument would be... Tilde A. It is false a. and won't swim, or it is false that and swims. It's false that and swims, or and won't swim. And I think I'll put the conclusion over here after a slanted slash. Okay. So the conclusion is? Tilde B. Bob won't swim, yeah. which would be tilde B. So we'll read the slanted slash as therefore, and it keep in mind it introduces the conclusion, and every numbered statement before the slanted slash then counts as a premise. So we have an English argument translated into our formal language into symbols, and now we're going to test it for validity on a truth table this way. We draw the line across, and then we draw the line horizontal, or vertical, mm -hmm. and then we put the premise, premises across the top of the table by putting the first premise there, then we draw a line, then we put the next premise there and draw a line. And if there were more premises, we'd line them up in order. At the end, we put the conclusion, which is tilde B. So you see what I did? I put the first premise there, second premise there, conclusion there. Now, the letters that are in the argument go over here. Let The argument only has two letters, A and B. I put A and B over here. And underneath them, I write in all the possible truth value combinations that these two letters could be assigned because our table is going to show us all the, it's going to show us the truth values for the parts of the argument given all possible truth value assignments for the letters. So A and B could either both be true or one's true, the other's false, or they're both false. This can be pretty low for you. I'll do. I'll get down. Okay. <laughs> so now we have a tr the argument on top of a truth table. We filled in the assigned the truth value assignments, and Mark uh, is going to run the table and see what we get. Okay. Well, I'll, let, I'll let Paul come back in here right at the tail end. So to get this started, again, <clears throat> the A's are going to be true, true, false, false. Let's say in row one, A's true, B's true. So I can fill in those blanks right away. The tilde is going to be the opposite of true. This tilde is going to be the opposite of true. This horseshoe will be true. Now I just go to row two. And then here, A's are true. B's are false. If that tilde, if that B is false, the tilde is going to be true. Vice versa, if the A is true, the tilde is going to be false. And this would be the one kind of situation in which case the horseshoe is going to be false. That's if you have a true antecedent and a false consequent. That's the one special situation where the horseshoes are false. For A, row 3, A is false. And Bs are true. That's going to make this tilde false and that tilde true. And that horseshoe comes out true. Finally, in row 4, A's and Bs are both false. Making that tilde true, that tilde true, and that tilde true. So if we look at the main connective columns here, what I'm looking for is a row where all the premises are true and the conclusion is false. If I can find that row, 
then by definition it's going to be an invalid argument. If it's impossible to have true premises and a false conclusion, it'll be a valid argument. And let's see, uh, I see right here, for instance, that premise is true, that premise is true, and that conclusion is false. This is telling me that it's possible, the structure of this argument allows for the possibility of having true premises and a false conclusion. By definition, that makes it an invalid argument. If it was a valid argument, it would be, by definition, impossible to have true premises and a false conclusion, and there's no way we would see this row where all the premises are true and the conclusion is false. That is, we would not see a row where, looking at the main connective columns, we would see true premises and a false conclusion. Do you want to say anything more about this, Paul? Okay. So, so here's then the rule. You, you, you run the table for an argument. You look at the rows horizontally. If there's any row, one or more rows, in, on which the premises are all true and the conclusion is false, that shows that the argument is invalid. If you get to the bottom of the table and there's no row on which the premises are all true and the conclusion is false, then that shows that the argument is valid. The idea is that the table shows you all the possible truth values that the premises and conclusion could have. The list is exhaustive. There are no other possibilities but these. So the table shows us all the possibilities. If there's one possibility of true premises with a false conclusion, that's shows the argument invalid. And, and if there's no such possibility, no row of true premises and a false conclusion, that shows the argument's valid. That's the idea. Okay, so let's do another one. You want to? Sure. Okay. A dog fight there. So now we'll have an English argument. If Anne swims Bob swims, Bob won't swim, so Anne won't swim. So now, this looks a lot like the previous argument, but actually if you think about it, it's got a different arrangement, a different order. So we're going to put it into symbols. What's, what's the first premise? A horseshoe B. A horseshoe B. For, so A stands for Ann swims, B stands again for Bob swims. Second premise? Tilde B. Bob tilde won't B. swim. Bob won't swim, tilde B. And the conclusion this time is? Tilde A. Ann won't swim, which is tilde A. So the only real difference between the two arguments is these get switched. But these have make, been switched, it yeah. It makes a difference. It, it will, we'll see. So we're going to put it on top of the table again. So we put the first premise on top, we draw a line. Then we put the next premise and we draw a line. And we line up the premises across the top. At the end we put the conclusion. Now this argument again has just A and B in it, so I put an A here and a B there. And all the possible truth values that A and B could have. True, true. Either they're both true, or the first is true and the second is false, or the first is false and the second is true, or they're both false. Now that all the possible truth values have been entered, uh, truth value assignments have been entered onto the table, Mark's going to run the table, and then looking at the main connective values, he's going to decide whether the argument's valid or invalid. Okay. You might ask yourself when you look at this argument, intuitively, uh, does it look valid to you? Does it seem valid or does it seem invalid? And Mark would agree with me because most people, if you've, after teaching this for many years, most people when they first look at this think that it's an invalid argument at first. And it's a little bit surprising to see what the table shows. Okay. I'm going to work vertically this time, just because it sometimes works quicker. A's are going to be true, true, false, false. So I can just make all the A's true, true, false, false. B's are going to be true, false, true, false. So I'll make all the B's true, false, true, false.
And then with this tilde, I can just look, scan down this column here and just do the opposite, because that's how tildes work. So we have false, false, true, true. Same with this tilde. False, true, false, true. Focusing on the horseshoe now, the only way you make a horseshoe false is if you have a true antecedent and a false consequent. All these other situations will be true. We got busy time here with dogs. Okay, so we got a complete truth table there. What I'm looking for is a horizontal row, looking just at the main connectives, where the premises are true and the conclusion's false. And I just don't see one. Uh, see, for instance, the first row. We have true prem we have a true premise here, but that premise is not true. Uh, that has a false premise. Here's a true premise, but that premise is not true. Here, both the premises are true, but we don't have a false conclusion. It looks like it's impossible, given the structure of this argument, to have true premises and a false conclusion. By definition, that makes it a valid argument. If it was invalid, we would see this special row where underneath the main connectives of the premises to be true and the conclusion would be false. We just don't see that there, so it's going to be a valid argument this time. So, can I just well, emphasize yeah. then that <clears throat> when you build a table for an argument, you're just looking for one thing. You're looking for a row, any row, anywhere, on which the premises are all true and the conclusion is false. If you don't find such a row after doing the whole table, the argument is yeah. valid. Uh -huh. If you find one such row, you can stop because you've proven the argument invalid or shown the argument invalid, I should say. You find one such row of true premises with a false conclusion. This, row, this table has no row of true premises with a false conclusion. That shows that it's a valid argument. It looks invalid at first. Don't, have you had that experience with students? Don't they usually, no. when you ask them, is this valid or invalid at first, they think it's, in, it's an invalid argument? Yeah, modus ponens is a little more intuitive, I think, to most people. Some people have to look at modus tollens for a while. Sometimes you can get kind of an example in your mind. For instance, if it's raining outside, then the ground is wet. The ground is wet. Would that guarantee it's, it's anything? Not, it's not wet, you mean. It's not wet. Therefore, <clears throat> must not be raining outside. Sometimes if we come up with examples of our own that make sense to us, it helps. It, it, it just kind of makes it intuitively it, seems intuitively, more valid, yeah. yeah. So it just kind of depends on the example we might use. But I, yeah, a lot of people have a tough time initially looking at modus tollens and seeing it. Mark is referring to a rule of logic. Uh, modus tollens is, is a name that was given to the structure that we have in this argument. It's a name given to that structure in the Middle Ages. and. Uh, you may or may not have encountered it yet, okay, but modus okay. tollens is what logicians call this pattern. And uh, it is a valid pattern of reasoning, and the table shows that it's valid. So, okay. good enough? Good. Good luck.